Gilbert Klingel was a man of steel. He was an adventurer, explorer, shipbuilder, and writer. He did research on marine life. He traveled from sparsely populated islands in the Caribbean to many leagues under the Chesapeake Bay. He learned metallurgy and he built a boat yard. Klingel wrote with a passion about boat building and about marine life above and below the Chesapeake. Freya, F-R-E-Y-A. A simple word meaning the Nordic goddess of love. That's also the name of a very important sailboat built by the legendary Gilbert Klingel in 1953, a steel hull boat that was revolutionary for a time. The first time I walked on board, you, you entered through the companionway and, and you could feel the change in the age. Uh, you, all of a sudden you were back in 1953 and, and the mode of building a boat was there and the, the, the functions of the boat were there and it was a whole different feeling about, you know, about sailing and what they did in their time. Uh, it was a great experience working with the boat for four or five days while I was down there. And I'm certainly looking forward to working some more and getting the boat back up here at Glens Island. With your help and support, we would like to bring back one of the only, if not the only, surviving steel hull sailboat built by Gil Klingel in 1953 from her current base at St. Augustine, Florida, back to her home at Gwynn's Island, at the legendary boat yard made famous by Gilbert Klingel. It was here he learned to swim, to sail, and when he saw those old schooners, he knew he would be someday a shipbuilder. This, this was really Gwynn's Island that got into his blood. The National Geographic Society asked him for a place to do the diving with his aquascope, and that's what they did. And at that point, he decided, okay, I'm building the boat yard. It was around 1952, 53, and he built the boat yard at that time. The first boat he built here, we think, was in 1953, and that was the Freya. The famous Freya we're gonna bring back from St. Augustine, Florida. I was raised, uh, you can probably see it in the camera, right over here in this home, which is not far from where we're standing, where Gilbert Klingel built boats. And uh, it was pretty easy. My childhood on Gwen's Island, of course, was a different time back then. But on Gwen's Island, it was a very close-knit community. Everyone knew everyone, and, uh, and everybody knew whose kids belonged to who. So I used to roam about the neighborhood quite a bit, and uh, I'm liable to end up anywhere. But one of the things that my grandmother would always say when I'd been over and helped Gilbert Klingel, I would come home with steel dust and dirt all over my jeans, and she didn't have to ask me where I'd been. She'd looked at me and she'd say, well, you've been in the shop with Mr. Klingel today, haven't you? Andrew Cooper, a pilot, made a solo trek to the island of Anagua, and after staging his journey, he hiked down the deserted beach to where Gilbert Klingel was shipwrecked and spent two years of his life. Morgan Wells, former director of diving programs for NOAA, became a student of Klingel's at an early age. His research, filming, and career followed Klingel's footsteps in many ways. We had the Undersea Research Foundation vessel here and used that for a lot of the underwater filming and for a support vessel for our underwater activities. In the first chapter of his book, he describes a nighttime dive. He describes his equipment, but it doesn't matter. His observations are, are timeless, so that it was done before most people were born around this country. Again, timeless. What he described is going on right as we speak under the Chesapeake Bay, just a little ways in that direction. Now we have a call to action. Help us in this remarkable journey to preserve an important part of our maritime past. We'd love to have you on our team to save this important part of history.